Is Russia backing off of Ukraine? San Francisco recalls three school board members. And Canada freezes the bank accounts of protesters. And more on this week's headlines. American Covered, I'm Chris Chappell. The Russian military announced a partial troop withdrawal from the Ukrainian border earlier this week, although that wasn't verified by the U.S. Russian President Vladimir Putin said that he was ready to have peaceful talks with the U.S. and NATO because he didn't want war. NATO was cautiously optimistic about this development until NATO found Russia was actually increasing their number of troops in the region. And Biden announced it seemed like Russia could invade Ukraine within days, especially when Russia escalated tensions by expelling the second highest ranking diplomat from the U.S. Embassy in Moscow. So Russia amassed troops, seemingly threatened to invade, met opposition and said they'll back down, but haven't backed down yet and are making things tense and awkward. This is like when a guy tells one of his lady friends that they should hook up. And when she gets angry, he says he was only joking, unless she actually wants to. No? Okay, then it was just a joke. Why are you so mad? A foreign ministry representative from the Kremlin said that Russia's announcement of troop withdrawals proves that the Western world were actually the aggressors, and their attempts to spark war failed. February 15, 2022 will go down in history as the day Western war propaganda failed humiliated and destroyed without a single shot fired. Yeah, the Western world is definitely humiliated that they stood up to Russia amassing troops and threatening to invade, and those troops pretended to back down, then got caught not backing down. Wait, do they think they won just because they made other countries mad at them? Apparently, Russian troll farms aren't just for the internet. They're also for the military. Lol, you mad broski? What's Russia gonna do next? Hack us? Oh wait, yeah, that's exactly what they're gonna do. Not that the US has covered itself in glory when it comes to the possible Russian invasion of Ukraine, especially the US media. Last week, media started citing anonymous US and Western officials claiming that the invasion of Ukraine was going to be this week as well as other anonymous sources like a person familiar who told Politico that Biden said Russia could invade on Wednesday, February 16th. A bunch of other media started running with the Wednesday date. As in, this past Wednesday. Spoiler alert, Russia did not invade Ukraine on Wednesday. Even though media kept quoting other media claiming the U.S. had Russia's detailed invasion plans. Now, the Ukrainian president was a little frustrated with all these media reports claiming to know exactly when Russia was going to invade his country. So he held a press conference where he basically said, hey, if you have information that Russia is 100% going to invade us on February 16th, please give that to us. He also declared February 16th a day of unity for Ukraine. Here's how he put it. We are told that February 16th will be the day of attack. We will make it a union day. The decree has already been signed. This afternoon, we will hang national flags, put on blue-yellow ribbons, and show the world our unity. Here's how U.S. media reported this. Ukrainian president says he's been told Russia will attack Ukraine on Wednesday. Yeah, he was told that by you. So the Ukrainian president was complaining about all these media reports about a Wednesday invasion, and then the media used that to claim he was confirming their story about a Wednesday invasion. You can't make this up. Do you get the sense the media really wants Russia to invade Ukraine? Speaking of threats to national security, a report released by the Pentagon says that consolidation in the arms industry poses a threat to national security. Since the 1990s, the number of defense and aerospace contractors working directly with the U.S. government has consolidated from 51 to just five. As of today, 90% of U.S. missiles come from only three sources. Man, 
even weapons manufacturers, are being swallowed up by larger corporations. It's like mom and pop missile manufacturers can't even catch a break anymore in this economy. The report says, the Department of Defense is increasingly reliant on a small number of contractors for critical defense capabilities. This has serious consequences for national security. The report laid out steps to block future mergers and promote competition in the industry. Is it just me, or does competition amongst weapons manufacturers sound kind of dangerous? Black Friday sales are already chaotic enough without firepower being on the shelves. Either way, I hope this works. Because the way things are going, corporate mergers are only going to get mergier. It won't be long before the U.S. only has one company supplying us weapons. And of course, that would be Disney. Because Disney is buying everything. But maybe it's not all that bad. After all, Disney has Captain America and Iron Man. If this is how we get an army full of super soldiers and battle armor, then I welcome our new corporate warmongering overlord mouse. More after the break. Welcome back. San Francisco has voted to recall three school board members. This recall vote was in response to the way the school board handled priorities during the COVID pandemic. While nearby school districts began having in-person classes again after over a year of distance learning, the San Francisco School Board had no plans or steps in place to reopen. They did, however, plan to rename 44 schools, including schools named after George Washington and Abraham Lincoln due to their ties to racism and slavery. Because what was the point of having students return to school if those schools were named after such historical monsters as Abraham Lincoln and George Washington? Honestly, after over a year of having their kids at home, I'm sure most parents would have felt fine sending their children off to Hitler High, Mussolini Middle, and Epstein Elementary. Yeah, the names aren't great, but thank God they're out of the house. San Francisco Mayor London Breed didn't say she agreed with the recall effort, but understood. She said, sadly, our school board's priorities have often been severely misplaced. Wow. The wheels on the bus go thump, thump, thump after Breed threw those school board members under it. Virginia elected Republican Glenn Youngkin as governor over Democrat Terry McAuliffe in what many said was a referendum on school policy. In that case, a lot of it was about critical race theory being taught. But another issue in Virginia was school districts trying to get rid of schools for gifted kids, which was also something the San Francisco School Board wanted to do. Voters will put up with a lot, but when you mess with their kids, they will reject you. Now, far-left ideology being rejected in Virginia is one thing, but in San Francisco? That's their whole thing. That'd be like Texas voting against eating Whataburger, Massachusetts voting against eating Dunkin' Donuts, and Florida voting against eating people's faces while you're high on bath salts. That's the official delicacy of the state. The open face sandwich. Remington Arms agreed to pay $73 million to families of victims killed at the Sandy Hook Elementary mass shooting in 2012, where one of their rifles was used in the shooting. This marks the first time a gun manufacturer settled monetarily with families of shooting victims. A mother of one of the victims said, marketing weapons of war directly to young people, known to have a strong fascination with firearms, is reckless and as too many families know, deadly conduct. Using marketing to convey that a person is more powerful or more masculine by using a particular type or brand of firearm is deeply irresponsible. While I can of course understand how upset they must be, blaming a gun manufacturer for a shooting is like blaming a baseball bat manufacturer when a mobster breaks someone's kneecap. Manufacturers can't be held liable when someone uses their item for a non-intended purpose. Also, the Sandy Hook killer murdered his mother and took her guns, some of which happened to be made by Remington. It's not like he had brand loyalty or did what he did because he saw a commercial. And as we learned, weapons manufacturers have to advertise. If they don't, there'll be less competition, which is a threat to national security and is how we might end up with a Disney army. 
And after the break, Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau gives himself emergency powers to target protesters. Welcome back. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau declared a state of emergency over protests against COVID mandates by truckers across the country. Protester blockades at the U.S.-Canadian border disrupted business for almost a week before the police cleared them away. Trudeau enacted the never-before-used Emergencies Act. It grants his government additional authority for 30 days, including being able to ban public assembly and travel. In a statement, Trudeau said, On Friday, Ontario invoked a state of emergency to respond to the blockades. This was the responsible and necessary thing to do. Today, to continue building on these efforts, the federal government is ready to use more tools at its disposal to get the situation fully under control. So, to stop a group of protesters who think the government is using authoritarian measures, the government is going to use even more authoritarian measures? This is a real, the beatings will continue until morale improves scenario. That's like saying, gee, how can we put out that grease fire? Oh, I know, douse the entire house in gasoline. Trudeau also said that banks can now freeze the accounts of anyone linked with the protest without a court order. This includes people who aren't even at the protests, but financially supporting them. Wow, Canada is so cold that now even their bank accounts might be frozen. Trudeau defended this saying, this is about keeping Canadians safe, protecting people's jobs. Yeah, it's about protecting jobs, mainly Trudeau's job, since he botched this whole thing on every conceivable level, waiting this long to respond to what three weeks ago he called just the small fringe minority. For such a small fringe minority, there sure are a lot of them. And even if there weren't that many, you maybe shouldn't have waited this long to act. Or even better, maybe you should have tried listening to their concerns. Trudeau also comes off as a massive hypocrite, since last year he expressed support for farmers in India who blocked highways, saying Canada will always be there to defend the right of peaceful protest. Always. You know, until it hurts his feelings and makes him look bad. Then he's going to call you a racist, misogynist terrorist, threaten to put you in jail, and freeze your bank accounts. Which sounds way less scary when you realize the currency he's freezing includes loonies and toonies. That makes him sound less like a maniacal tyrant and more like a Bugs Bunny villain. Be very, very quiet. I'm hunting poor testers. The premiers of different Canadian provinces have spoken out against invoking the Emergencies Act saying the police already have the necessary tools to peacefully clear the truck blockades as they demonstrated. Which is impressive they were able to clear those massive trucks, since Canadian police are known mainly for riding horses. At the time of this recording, Canadian police are threatening to arrest protesters in the nation's capital, Ottawa, if they block streets. Even if Trudeau is able to end these protests, he's lost support and been made to look ineffective, hypocritical, and authoritarian. Oh. And he also said this in response to a conservative Jewish member of parliament questioning his methods. Conservative party members can stand with people who wave swastikas. They can stand with people who wave uh, the Confederate flag. Word to the wise, it's way past time we put a moratorium on the you're a Nazi argument. But if you do still use it, make sure you don't use it on a descendant of Holocaust survivors. You know you've lost the debate when you resort to calling a Jewish person an Uncle Tomica. Russia should probably take notes from these truckers, because this is how you actually have your adversaries get humiliated and destroyed without a single shot fired. Trudeau has revealed himself as being two-faced, which I guess is slightly better than all the revelations of him in blackface. Come on, I couldn't talk about him for this long and not bring it up at least once. So what do you think about the stories we covered this week? Let us know in the comments below. Remember, America Uncovered is supported mainly by viewers. Be sure to visit patreon.com slash America Uncovered. Contribute a dollar or more per episode. We rely on your support to help us keep making great episodes. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.